Are you considering building a home and wondering what do I need to start the process? Maybe what's included? What are my choices? And how long is it gonna take to actually build my home? Well, having built nearly 10,000 homes in Edmonton, we have heard it all. And today we will be joined by area sales manager, Juliana Rombo, and she's going to answer the top questions that we get asked by basically everyone. Welcome back, Juliana. Thanks so much for having me. So to keep it simple, we're gonna start from the beginning. People always ask, what do I need to start the process? So one of the first things you wanna have is a trusted lender. So it's very important to have a lender already ahead of time. If you don't, that's fine too, because the builder will often have preferred lenders that they use that they've worked closely with in the past. This can definitely be an advantage to you because they already know what the builder needs or expects in terms of timelines and letters or documents. Also, you wanna make sure that you have an area sales manager or an ASM as we commonly refer to them, uh, somebody that you trust, somebody that's knowledgeable not only about their product but also about what else is out there on the market, uh, what's happening outside of the market that's putting pressure on the homes as well. So things like lumber costs and you know, supply, demand, all of those things as well. Um, and somebody who's gonna be a creative problem solver, somebody that's gonna find a house that's gonna suit your needs. Also somebody who knows how to read a blueprint. So they have to be able to understand what's on the blueprint, what's included with the house, because there's more information than just what's on the marketing brochures that you're gonna see in the show homes. All right, so that's question number one. What do I need to start the process? What's maybe the next question? So people always ask what is included. If you're not asking this, you should be asking it. It's very important to know what's included in the cost or the construction of your new home. So where you're gonna find this information is on what we commonly refer to as the specification list for a builder. So on the specification list, you can find everything for all the models that the builder constructs. Sometimes they might have groupings. For example, if they have all their townhomes are gonna to follow one set of specifications, and then all their single family houses might follow another set of specifications. But in this spec list, you can often find things like, do I get quartz countertops? What kind of flooring am I gonna get? Uh, what kind of cabinets? So do I have soft closed drawers, soft closed cabinets? Are you gonna get the deeper cabinet over the fridge? What kind of ceiling height are you gonna get on every single floor? Also the mechanicals, very important to read this section in the specification list. So mechanicals refers to everything from your furnace to your air exchanger, or commonly referred to as an HRV, uh, your hot water uh, heating system as well. So whether you have a tank hot water, how big it is, 50 gallon, 75, 80 gallon, or if it's a tankless hot water system. And also does it run on gas or does it run on electricity? And the, the spec list will also mention insulation as well. So types of insulation, we have bat insulation or spray foam insulation. It's typically going to mention where they're going to apply each type of insulation on the home as well. And then we also have model specific inclusions too. So things like how many bathrooms come with that house? Uh, what kind of cabinet layout? So is it gonna be an over the range microwave or is it gonna be that snorkel style hood fan that you see a lot of? Do you get an island in your kitchen? Do you have a walkthrough pantry? Do you have a corner pantry? Um, any kind of little extra, so things like a fireplace or if there's a shower in the ensuite that's maybe been upgraded to a fully tiled shower, maybe the glass has been upgraded as well, so you'll find that in the model specific inclusions. Okay, Juliana, that is a lot to know just to start the process. Mm -hmm. So if people have questions, I'm hearing you say just ask. Absolutely, so you wanna make sure that you ask. This goes back to dealing with a sales manager that you know is knowledgeable and one that you can trust. So after you already know what's included in your house, we always get the question, okay, so now what are my choices? So your choices are gonna vary drastically depending on your time frame. Um, so you have, you're gonna have more choice with the longer time frame that you have. Now we can talk about things like what type of floor plan do you need? Are you looking for a townhome, a single family house, or a lane style home? Then within each of those floor plans, there's often model options, what we call. Um, and that will be basically predetermined ch uh, changes to the layout that we've already done ahead of time. We've also priced them ahead of time. And these are often changes that a lot of people are asking for. So that's why we've created them as options for you. So for example, these can be things like a separate entrance on the staircase, 
uh, a full bath on the main floor and an enclosed bedroom space as well. Of course, you also get to choose the community. So Paysetter is in over 30 different communities across the uh, Edmonton and area. So you're gonna have lots of choice when you build with us. Then after you choose your community, you have to decide on what kind of lot you want. So your lot can determine how big your backyard is going to be, what type of exposure your house is gonna have, so what direction you're facing, north, south, east, west, etc. Also, are you gonna back onto an amenity, so like a pond or a walking trail, or do you prefer a house that's gonna be backing onto another house? Maybe you're gonna save some money when you choose that. And it's a little bit more private maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you're often gonna get the full privacy screen fence, so the six foot high wood screen fence, when you back onto an amenity like a pond or a walking trail, oftentimes the developer will have put the fence in the back. And typically it's either an iron, wrought iron fence or a chain link fence and they are a lot shorter. So the outside of the house, you also get to choose the colors that go on the outside. So you can choose everything from the siding color to the trim color to your front door color when you're starting the process from the beginning. And now, of course, you have interior choices. Mm -hmm. You get to choose the interior colors of the house when you're starting at the beginning as well. So when we're talking about the interior of the house, this could be everything from cabinet layouts to the flooring type to upgrading to a fully tiled shower if you wanted to, all the way down to your paint and trim color. I love it, Juliana. That sounds like so much choice, but it can feel overwhelming. How do people decide what's a need and what's a want and where to spend and where to save? So I think what we'll do is we will put our um, needs and wants checklist in the link below for people to download to help them start the process and they can show up with that in hand. Absolutely. So it's a great place to start so that people can fill it out and figure out exactly where their priorities really are. All right, so far we have covered what it takes to start the process, what is included and what are my choices? So what do people typically ask next? So people are often curious how long it's gonna take for them to actually be moving into the house. So when you're buying a new construction, there's often two different types of houses that you can purchase that are gonna have totally different wait times from the time you purchase the home to the time you're actually moving into it. So we have a quick possession home, which typically is gonna have a much shorter time frame from the time you buy to the time you move in. And then we also have a pre-sale home, which would be something that you're starting from scratch, where you're picking the lot, you're picking the type of house, and you have the ability to make those changes that we just talked about. So what do you mean by quick possession? So quick possession would be a house where the builder has already started the process for you and they've done some pre-selections, for example, deciding which lot to put the house on, what the outside is going to look like, what the floor plan is, and perhaps some of the upgrades that are put into the house as well. So it's going to significantly reduce the time frame from when you're coming into the show home and buying the house to the time that you're actually taking possession. Now, because we have a shorter time frame, unfortunately, you often have less choice. Some people really like that though because it's a lot less for them to worry about or for them to think about. So that's a perfect scenario for someone who doesn't want to have to make those decisions. They don't have the mind of an interior designer, but they still get that beauty of a brand new house. Absolutely, so when considering which option to think about, if you're currently a homeowner, it's gonna be different than if you're currently in a lease agreement. So if you're currently a homeowner, you wanna think about, do I need to renovate my home in any way before I put it onto the market? Does it need a fresh up? Does it need a new paint job? Do I have to declutter? Um, maybe think about getting a realtor out to give you a home assessment so you have an idea of what kind of buying power you're gonna have for your next house. You can also even consider, do I wanna rent out my existing house and keep it as equity and build up my portfolio that way? If you're currently in a lease agreement, your options are different. You wanna make sure that you're talking with your landlord about what kind of options you have so some landlords might be flexible and you may be able to just extend for a month or two if you just need a little bit of extra time. Another thing to think about is that people always get worried if they're still in a lease agreement and they're taking possession of their new house before their lease agreement is up. So for example, if your lease agreement is up on June 30th and you're gonna be taking possession of your new home on June 20th, they get worried that they're gonna be stuck with two monthly payments for that month where in fact they're not. So the reason why is because rent, you're gonna be paying it a month ahead of time. So your rent for June, you're paying that on June 1st. Your monthly mortgage payment isn't gonna happen until a month after you've moved in. So if you're moving in June 20th, you're not gonna to have to pay your mortgage payment until July 20th. So you're not gonna be making two payments in the month of June. 
So speaking of timelines, it's important to understand that there's lots of different factors that are going to affect how quickly your house is going to be built. Obviously living in Edmonton, one of the biggest things we can think of right away is the weather. So when it's below minus 30, people like framing crews or exterior work can't be done. Then we have to think about that there's going to potentially be um, different material and labor availability at the time of your build. There's always also seasonal items that the builder can only take care of during the summer. So for example, that would be your driveway on your house. So we can't pour driveways in the winter because there's frost in the ground. And if we pour a driveway before that frost melts, then we're gonna potentially have that driveway cave in. Now, because our basements and all of our footings for support for our house are under the frost line, we can still pour those during the winter, but the driveway sits above the frost line. So that's why we have to make sure that we wait for all that frost to be out of the ground before we're pouring your driveway. And also you wanna make sure that you're working with a builder that's going to keep you updated and informed for all these timelines so that you have an idea of when you're actually gonna be taking possession of your house. So to summarize, what we have answered for house hunters today is number one, what do you need to start the process? Mm -hmm. And really what you should expect from the builder that you choose. And number two is what is included. So ask for that specification list. Uh, number three, what are my choices? because from what we've heard from you today, every builder and every community are different. And number four, how long will it take to build my home? And after what you've shared with us today, there are tons of variables. Mm -hmm. So it's so important to choose the right builder and work with someone that you trust. Thank you so much for your time today, Juliana. Once again, you have been so helpful in answering the big questions that really are top of mind for house hunters who are wanting to build their dream home. Thanks so much for having me. It's always a pleasure. Beauty.